clean water. Every living thing depends on it. You may have heard of Benjamin Franklin's quote, When the well is dry, we know the worth of water. Hi, I'm Catherine, Program Coordinator at Wachusett Reservoir. I'm here at this dry stream bed wondering when it's going to rain. It made me think of the value of water. Have you ever had to worry about the next time you had a clean drink of water? Or if you had enough water to wash your hands or do the dishes? In the early 1900s, Wachusett Reservoir was constructed because the people in metropolitan Boston area worried about just that. There wasn't enough water supply for basic needs or putting out fires. After creation of the Wachusett Reservoir, an even bigger supply was needed and engineers looked to the west to construct the Quabbin Reservoir. The system now provides drinking water to over three million people. Today, it's easy to take for granted a ready supply of clean water. We might not worry much about it locally. After all, water covers 70% of our planet and it's easy to think that it will always be plentiful. Yet, fresh water, the water we drink, wash in, flush toilets with, do the dishes, and water our lawns, is a valuable resource. Only 3% of the world's water is fresh water, and less than 1% is available for our use. The rest is locked in ice caps. So let's do what we can to protect the water quality in our surface reservoirs and underground wells for future generations. The largest amount of water pollution does not come from businesses, municipalities, or other regulated sources. Instead, most of the pollution comes from chemicals, debris, and animal waste washed over land every time it rains. Did you know the biggest threat to our water quality is runoff from stormwater? That's because it comes from everywhere and has an effect on all of our water, rivers, streams, wetlands, reservoirs, and even underground water sources. Because pollutants can be found everywhere, it's called non-point source pollution. We can't always pinpoint the exact source. When small amounts of chemicals or other materials spill on the ground, it might stay there until the next rain or snow. As the rain runoff moves along, it picks up the pollution from parking lots, sidewalks, and other impervious or hard surfaces, construction sites, and even our own backyards. This stormwater runs off across the land and into storm drains, instead of slowly seeping into the ground, where it would have been filtered by soil and plants to end up in the water table. When it rains, the water flows into here and can end up here. Many storm drains were designed to carry stormwater directly into rivers, lakes, ponds, reservoirs, and even oceans. Most times, anything that enters into a storm drain is discharged untreated into the water bodies we use. What goes in, comes out. You may be asking, doesn't all the water get treated? The water from your sink, shower, or toilet in your house goes to a sanitary sewer system, then to a treatment facility to be cleaned before it's released back into water bodies or into a septic tank before releasing clean water back into the groundwater supply. But the storm water system is usually a totally separate system. Rain and snow melt pick up whatever's left on the ground carry it into catch basins and storm drains, and wash it downstream into our waterways. It can even get into underground sources of drinking water. It's a big problem for all of us. Storm water can also harm the ecosystem and hurt wildlife. The Watershed Protection Act regulates land use and activities within critical areas of the reservoir watersheds. By managing stormwater runoff, the protected watershed can provide a pristine habitat for a variety of species. Let's take a look at what's in runoff and what could happen if these protections were not in place. Sediments, sand, soil, silt, causes turbidity or cloudiness in streams. 
It scatters sunlight, preventing it from reaching the stream bottom. Sediments can clog the gills of fish and other aquatic organisms. It settles out and covers the otherwise healthy rocky bottom habitat and can allow for invasive species to grow. Nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus come from fertilizers as well as pet waste. Water with too many nutrients becomes cloudy and green. It encourages weeds and algal blooms. Blooms involving toxins can pose serious threats to animals and humans. Grass clippings and leaves can also contain nutrients and take oxygen out of the water as they decompose. Low levels of dissolved oxygen can kill fish. Pathogens and bacteria that come from pet waste can cause a long list of problems. When the waste decays, it uses up oxygen and sometimes releases ammonia. Rainwater heats up from flowing over pavement and raises the temperature of streams or lakes. Sudden changes in water temperature impact the water quality and chemistry and can affect the health of fish and other organisms. It's like pouring hot water into your home aquarium. Toxic contaminants from motor oil or antifreeze leaks can harm plants and animals that live in or near the water. Did you know that one quart of motor oil can pollute 250,000 gallons of water? Road salt is carried into the stormwater system. It can change the salt content of fresh water and make it hard for plants and animals to live. How do we keep all of this out of our waters? The most important thing we can all do is to not allow rainwater runoff to become polluted in the first place by not leaving anything on the ground that shouldn't be there. The second is to slow it down, spread it out, and soak it in. One important thing we can all do is protect wetlands. Floodplains and wetlands are two landscape features that are an important part of the natural process of cleaning runoff. They help to filter out pollutants by acting as a sponge, by slowing down storm water, spreading it out, and allowing it to soak in. A floodplain is a low-lying area near water which floods during heavy rain. Generally, a wetland is an area where water often saturates the soil and may have water on the surface. But wetlands are not always wet. If you notice a lot of ferns, red maple trees, or moss, this could be a wetland. Wetlands are characterized by the soils, plants, and sometimes animals that use the area. They provide the principal habitat for migratory birds, waterfowl, and wading birds. The Federal Clean Water Act is the overarching national law protecting our water supplies. The Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act protects wetlands. We can all strive to protect these areas and preserve the natural benefits that they have. Participate in a local cleanup event to pick up litter along wetland areas and thank a wetland for filtering storm water running off impervious or hard surfaces naturally. What are we doing? The DCR, Division of Water Supply Protection, has been actively constructing Stormwater Treatment Best Management Practices, BMPs. These are structures such as detention basins, rain gardens, swales, and channels. This project is a bioretention system. It works like a large rain garden and also provides accidental spill containment. It's designed to collect stormwater runoff from about two and a half acres of impervious areas around the reservoir. This stormwater treatment system contains potential accidental spills and during storm drains and uses special plants, shrubs, soils, bacteria, and natural processes to remove key stormwater pollutants. It will treat about three million gallons of runoff each year. This project is an engineered subsurface gravel wetland with several accidental spill containment areas. It's designed to collect stormwater runoff from about nine acres of impervious areas around the reservoir. This system uses wetland vegetation. 
soils, bacteria, and natural processes to remove stormwater pollutants, including nitrogen and phosphorus, so it mimics a natural wetland system. Staff inspects DCR basins on a regular basis. With proper maintenance, this subsurface gravel wetland will treat approximately 11 million gallons of runoff each year. This basin keeps 10,000 pounds of sand out of the Stillwater River each year. This basin at the intersection of routes 140 and 62 was designed to treat the volume of runoff from hard or impervious surfaces running into the nearby Stillwater River. With a drainage area of 62 acres, 6% 6 of this area is made up of hard surfaces, such as roadways, driveways, and rooftops. This infiltration basin replaces what was over 3,600 linear feet of storm drain, which discharged to the river without any treatment. The way this basin works is, stormwater is directed by storm drains into the small section of the basin called the forebay. Here, sand and sediment that are heavier than water along with other pollutants will settle to the bottom allowing the cleaner water to flow through the rocks and into the main basin. The large portion of the basin has been designed to allow for slow infiltration and seepage through trenches, allowing for additional cleaning before it reaches the Stillwater River. The result is a cleaner storm water runoff entering into and recharging the river as it flows into the Wachusett Reservoir. The detention basin also serves to reduce flooding, to control erosion, and it's a wildlife habitat. How can you help protect our water supplies from stormwater pollution? And here are some simple actions that you can take. First, never dump anything down a storm drain. Pick up after your pet and dispose of it properly. Properly dispose of grass clippings and leaf litter. Use pesticides and fertilizers sparingly and never use them before a heavy rain. Don't sweep sand or lawn debris into the gutter or near a storm drain and repair any areas in your yard where soil is exposed. Wash your car on the lawn so the water soaks in or take it to a car wash. Fix leaks on your vehicle and store hazardous materials, including oils, properly and pick up spills right away. Have your septic system inspected regularly. Remember, the key is to allow only clean rainwater to enter the storm drain system and then slow it down, spread it out, and soak it in. Build a rain garden. Plant with deep-rooted native plants and grasses or Install a rain barrel. Protect wetlands. Participate in local neighborhood cleanup efforts. Know where your storm drains are and keep the areas clean of trash and debris. Thank you for watching. I hope you can join me in making daily decisions of simple things we can do to prevent storm water pollution.